Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this removal. This is an eastern yellow jacket nest. It's on the side of an embankment here. Uh, the customer had a, uh, a lawn care guy that was taking care of the uh, taking care of mowing the grass and he got stung and uh, that's when they realized there was a yellow jacket nest. Matter of fact, the homeowner had just been here about a week before weeding this garden right along the side of the, the yard. So she was pretty lucky not to get stung. But anyhow, I'm going to remove this nest for them. I'm going to dig it up and show you guys what it looks like on the inside. All right. Always pull the sleeves up. The most compromising part of this suit are the wrists. Ugh, they're always compromised. So I always make sure that the shirt, long sleeve shirt that I'm wearing underneath, always wear long sleeves long pants this material is pretty protective but some of these guys they latch on and they can shoot that stinger well into the fabric and down to your skin may not go in very far but it's enough to sting my suit isn't the prettiest someday I'm gonna be getting a new suit primarily just for the new veil this veil has so many holes in it it's just it's almost an embarrassment. And as always, I come prepared with not only the vacuum, but I bring a little bit of black flag just in the instance that there's a swarm just to batten down the numbers. Our lawn care professional is behind us. I didn't use your name, don't worry. <laughs> You're good, I don't care anyway. Oh, okay. My dad's so funny, man. I, uh, you said customer in here because I know that if damn well if I would have said this is my dad's house, he would have. <laughs> Don't put that on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a customer. yeah exactly. Where did it sting you? Uh, on your leg. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I've been stung in a while. So it was a new experience. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's always it shocking. It's not yeah. so much that it like hurts. It's just like, oh my gosh, like yeah, you know. Like, what is that? What is that? Yeah, yeah right. And then it's like, then when you know it's a yellow jacket, or you, it like dawns on you, then you're like, you don't want to get hit again, yeah. you know, and you just, just run. Yeah, it was like, you Yeah. <laughs> 50 bucks. Yeah, most of them are pretty expensive, but I got the cheapest one they had. It all does the same thing, you know? Yeah. You're racking it in. Yeah. Yeah, this is the hole. You can probably see that a lot better than I can with the veil on. I can't see any, hardly anything. see we're coming in from over here over here and then follow through all the way over to there Queen. 
look out in there. There's the queen. See her in there? All right, so I got the nest home here and I decided to do some close-up shots of the comb itself and just to show how different this nest can look compared to the Dolica Vespula maculata or the quote-unquote bald-faced hornet. So I was able to get some pretty cool close-up shots of the, uh, of the larva and then showing some of the paper here and how different the paper looks compared to a lot of other yellow jackets. So this being a subterranean, their their paper and nest is really, really brittle. Um, when I hold it in my fingers, I have to be really, really delicate because even the comb will just kind of crumble and fall apart. You can hear the chickens in the background. They knew that that nest was coming to them. It's quite a bit of brood in there. Some nice close-up shots. That's Ginger. <laughs> I know my girls. And all that white stuff, that's silk cap, and that's what the larva will weave to um, before they're going into their pupation stage, uh, before coming and in, turning into adults. So all that white stuff, that's what that is. Can I help you? Kind of in the middle of something. If you look closely on this comb, the inner ring of white silk caps kind of have like a dark hue behind them. That's because there are adults about to hatch out of those cells. And then the ones towards the outside are pretty well white. And then of course the larva on the outer side. So you can kind of tell that the inner, so inner ring is were laid first. And then as the queen laid out, um, that got, they were kind of newer newer larvae, so therefore they were at different earlier stages of pupation. The top of the comb, that's what was attached to the soil. And even though it was underground, look how clean it is. There's just no like mud on it, it's not caked. These are all new adults, so I was just peeling off the silk caps because people were asking in the other videos about me maybe doing that. So I just peel off the silk caps and you can see little, they're all different stages, so those are ones that aren't quite ready to come out yet. That's a, that one's ready to come out. And you can tell by how ready they are by how yellow they are. The ye more yellow they are, the, the sooner they were going to be out on their own anyway. It's kind of just like waking them up too early before they were supposed to wake up because they were ready to go right back down in the cells again. That one's pretty well ready. That would have been a bit out probably the next day or so. All right, so decided to tweeze out some more larvae. Tweeze them out for my girls. Got a nice big pile there for them to eat. You can see how brittle the paper is because as I'm tweezing it off, there's bits of paper getting stuck to my tweezers. That, that see, it just falls apart. This is sped up a little bit. I'm not quite this fast in real life. <laughs> and people sometimes ask in the comments, um, 
if it's safe to give these to my chickens because of uh, if I'm using any chemicals or anything. And um, I don't really use any chemicals or anything with my nest removals. So these are perfectly safe for my chickens. Um, they also ask about stingers. Well, stingers haven't developed yet in the uh, the larva or even in some of the pupation stage. So they're, it's really not dangerous for the, for the chickens. Even if they do eat a, a full adult, it's not going to hurt them. His birds are pretty resilient, almost like bulletproof, <laughs> except actual bullets. So there's more adults. Look at how, look how yellow this one is. This one was just about ready to come out anyway. She buzzed her wings when I pulled her out like that, and it spooked my <laughs> spooked my hand. I knew she wasn't going to sting me because when you pull them out, um, the, even even ones that hatch on their own, um, they usually stay in the nest for about two days and kind of dry out their wings. And all that. These guys can't fly, so even if they did hatch on their own, they wouldn't be able to fly for about two days. Their wings would be too soft and too wet. So I decided to pop open a, um, a cell with a cap um, that had just recently weaved its cap but was starting to develop into an adult so this is a um, this is a pupa that is looks like an adult hornet but it still also looks like a larva so it's still yellow it's still very very soft all of its appendages are super soft its eye hasn't fully developed yet it's pretty wild so you got like four different stages of pupation here Some smaller larvae that have just recently hatched from being an egg. It's a nice shot of all the brood that I pulled out. So I got a nice, pretty nice pile of them. It's actually surprisingly really soft. It's not as gross as it looks when you touch it. I know a lot of people are going to comment about how gross this is. <laughs> yes, I washed my hands after handling them before I ate anything. I tried to make this shot as gross as possible. So touching all of them, picking them up. I was putting them in a cup because that's another thing that people were asking is to see them all in a cup and then give them to the chickens all at the same time. I couldn't do this with maggots. I can easily do it with yellow jacket larva. <laughs> so I just get the rest of them, put them in this little Tupperware before giving them to the girls. Try not to smush them. That's how I call the girls. I got quite a collection for them. Oh, they loved it. Look how fast that pile's going down. It's practically gone. What was that? 15 seconds. And it took me freaking 
half hour to 40 minutes to get them all out of there. <laughs> A couple left stuck in the bottom of the tub. And again, on the rest of the comb. They won't eat actual adults, but they will eat the forming adults inside the combs. And the precision of their beak is incredible because they, they are pecking into the holes and pulling out the larva. And then another thing they do is they'll they'll bite and shake it and then kind of tear it open and then whatever flies out they go and they catch real quick. Ginger's the matriarch, and she doesn't like it when uh, the other girls are eating food that she thinks she's entitled to, so she kind of chases the other ones around, especially Pigeon. Pigeon's such a pushover. I think she chases her here. Angel changes, uh, or chases Pigeon, too, so... <laughs> See, there she goes. Ginger chasing Pigeon away because Pigeon was going to eat some of her larva. It's wild. And that was all. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't been here before, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you, also, if you haven't been here, please check out some of my other videos of nest removals. If you have been here before and you guys are subscribers, thanks so much for supporting my channel and I'll catch you guys on the next video.